What's up everybody, Baby Huey here, and joining me once again is my tag team partner, Tim from Pro Wrestling Unlimited. What's going on, man? Not much. Love doing this show with you. Every time you ask me to be on it, I'm like, yes, I'll do it. We were supposed to maybe do it yesterday, then things got in the way, but we're recording today because I love doing the show with you. Awesome. No, seriously, thank you again for making the last minute call. Of course. I, 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 I've noticed that's become like the, the trend lately for you and I. It's like, you know, if, if something comes up with Brian, he's not available, but I still need to get an episode out. You're my go-to guy. Right. I, I cannot thank you enough for doing that and just being available and on call. And so, yes, no, I, I truly do appreciate it. And uh, yeah, man, I have a lot to talk about. Um I do want to say I do apologize to the Clicksters for not getting an episode uh, recapping, reviewing Money in the Bank. I guess we've been within the last week or so. Just work's been busy. A lot's been going on. Uh, uh, just, you know, so much to do as always. Just summertime for me at the radio station is very busy with just a lot of events and, and things at the station. So I'm always playing catch up. But my goal is, you know, from here on out for the rest of the summer and just rest of 2023, get back on track. And so uh, we will, uh, so much to talk about for you guys. So I figure... For this episode, it will be our WWE uh, specific episode. We'll talk about uh, the highlights from this week's episode of Raw, also SmackDown, and then we'll sprinkle in just what, how do we got there based on what happened in Money the Bank. And here we are, Tim. We are on the road to SummerSlam, which I'm Heck like, yeah. What, what three weeks now? Wait, is my Matt? No, it's August fifth. So yeah, about three weeks. Uh, yeah. The return so, of the biggest party of the summer. So, so at we're recording this. It's the thirteenth of. July, there are yeah. four SmackDowns and three Raws left. There you go. So we have about three and a half weeks now. Yeah. So it's, uh, I figure, yeah, we're on the road to SummerSlam. So I think what we'll do is we'll talk, as we talk about the highlights from Raw and SmackDown, we'll do that as in a way of like, kind of like get an idea where they're going, which direction they're going, WWE's going for SummerSlam mm. and potential matches. Uh, I have like a list here and, you know, based on Triple H's formula, he doesn't know more than what? seven matches so i assume that'll probably be the norm again about seven matches for SummerSlam, and it'll probably make that smackdown the day I before can, probably right. a big pack like pay-per-view quality level matches there i can see because it's SummerSlam. maybe they add a couple more maybe instead of doing a three to three and a half hour show they stretch mm. it to four just yeah. because it's SummerSlam. and it'll so be the, the, that is possible it's going to be in Detroit, and that'll right. be what? WWE's first time back in America for a PLE. As since Edge, Mania. Edge said, yeah, since Mania. Yeah. So, I didn't uh, even think about it like that, but yeah. Yeah, so what, Puerto months. Rico and then London and, and, yeah. and yeah, Saudi Arabia. So, yeah, there's there it's uh, uh, it, it's oh, exciting. Yeah. Out of champions in Saudi. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. So, Jesus Christ. I know, so it's kind of exciting back in uh, America. Right. <laughs> so Triple H uh, said, Triple H said, we're a worldwide company and we want to be putting on shows all over the world. Which I'm, I respect that. I, I think mm -hmm. for WWE to reach their audience, they have fans outside of North America. So I think it's smart for them to potentially go to other continents, other countries, mm -hmm. and reach places that don't get WWE. Oh, on a regular so right. i'm sure when they go there you're reaching a fan base that's like starving for this product and they're gonna go balls to the wall the crowd's gonna be hot as we saw money to bank another awesome crowd there and the people are gonna really gonna appreciate wwe being there and so i think you know here in america we get a little jaded with so many events and sometimes oh, crowds yeah. can be hit or miss as far as their reaction and participation so when they go out of out of the country it's like half the half the battle or half the enjoyment of watching a premium live event is just seeing the crowd reaction here. Um, actually, this is kind of off topic, a little bit off schedule. Uh, speaking of Money the Bank, we should just talk about it. John Cena did make a surprise appearance there, uh, and Grayson Waller. They had this whole interaction with Grayson Waller. More or less, John Cena used that opportunity in the ring and. Asked the audience there who would like to see a WrestleMania in London. And, of course, the crowd went crazy, super excited. And it led to Grayson Waller going back and forth. Grayson Waller's like, well, if they're going to go out of country for WrestleMania, they should go to my home country, Australia. And it led to a back and forth between them. Um, so two-part here for Tim. Just one, your thoughts on 
you know, WrestleMania potentially going out of country, out of the U.S. And then, too, you, your thoughts on Grayson Waller, how he handled himself in front of John Cena. I'll take the back half of that first. Grayson okay. Waller was great. Mm-hmm. So I've, I've said this for a long time. When they rebranded NXT, did NXT 2.0, and Grayson Waller debuted there, I didn't like him. I'm like, oh, this, <laughs> is, the guy that is, like him. this no. is the guy that's annoying, and he came off like a guy playing pro wrestler. Like, mm-hmm. he wasn't fully committed and was like, oh, I'll take this paycheck. But the more and more he has grown and the more he has done, he doesn't feel like he's playing pro wrestler. That just feels like a guy in wrestling, and that's him. And he's mm-hmm. become – and he's always felt comfortable on the mic and stuff, but I feel like he's just come into his own in a way where it's like, oh, no, I like this guy. And when this guy does something, I'm interested and I'm invested. So he's grown on me tremendously from not liking him and saying, get this guy off my TV to, Oh, Grayson Waller. What are you doing? Like, yes. He interacts, he interacts with the rock the other day on Twitter. (laughs) I know. I saw that. I called him out and said, yeah, or he held up the photo of like, I guess his old outfit when he put the, he put the thing on. He he had, I'm like, where did you get that from? I know he must have went to the the storage unit. I I watch, uh, the uh, Hidden Treasure show on WWE for for A and E, mm. and yeah, maybe he went to the for uh, uh, in Connecticut to the storage unit, found the Rock's outfit, and put it on right. there. But he's like my man. He's like I didn't have to wear any goofy outfit for my MSG debut. <laughs> and then but the then, Rock. Then the yeah. Rock was like, "Well, that's Triple H's idea." So, <laughs> but then the Rock, you know, countered back, and then Grayson responded, yeah. said. Well, if you need my help, you're more than welcome to be a guest on the mm. Grayson Waller effect if you need to get the rub from me. I mean, it's just like, kudos to Grayson Waller for not not like uh, uh, standing down. He responded well, even, back to The Rock. Even Edge Edge beat him, but put him over big after the match. Yes, absolutely. It was, uh, um, he, uh, didn't, I forgot what he, on the mat, like, didn't he say something to him? Well, or, so- Oh, no, he grabbed the microphone, right? Or So Grayson Waller says something during the Grayson Waller effect thing about sinking or swimming. And yes, so that's right. Edge that's right. Beats him. Edge then grabs the mic and said, hey, kid, you swam and threw the mic at him. That's right. Like, how, other than beating Edge, what other big kudos could you have gotten? Like, what, how much more of a rub could he have gotten? I mean, look at the last two weeks for Grayson Waller, mm-hmm. interacting with The Rock on social media, uh, putting on a great match with Edge at Madison Square Garden and then the Edge. Uh, acknowledging him afterwards mm-hmm. and giving him props as you, you held your own, more or less. Yeah. And then, yeah, the the promo with John Cena. I, it's like, and he held his own. It was very entertaining. So, yeah. I, I like, just as far as his performance, I feel like Grayson Waller is performing the way I think they probably maybe thought Austin Theory should have been. I was thinking the same thing. Okay, good. Yeah, and, see, yeah. And, and, and think about this, though. Grayson Waller's been out with a broken leg, which was actually to his benefit, because then he wouldn't have had that Madison Square Garden debut. It would have just been a random wherever debut. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, dude, kudos to him, and he's really grown. I mean, you think about what NXT 2.0 debuted, what, August 2021? So almost coming up on two years where we got to kind of learn about him when he debuted Mm -hmm. for NXT. And as you mentioned, like, so what, two years ago? So, in less than two years, he's really come a long way. And, yeah, yeah I'm with you. At first, I was like, oh, Grayson Waller. Uh. But now I'm like, I'm excited to see him. He's very entertaining. And as, as you know, Tim, he's a very fun interview as well in person. <laughs> right. So it's uh, – no, I, I'm I'm very happy for him. And I hope he, he continues to shine on SmackDown. But uh, now as far as what John Cena said about – kind of more or less not making official but teasing the idea of wwe bringing wrestlemania to london i'm i'm excited for i think that'd be something mm-hmm. different and I, i'm trying to think wwe's never done wrestlemania outside the u.s i no. know they've done multiple locations but well i, I think that'd be really te- exciting actually technically yes wrestlemania 18 in canada that's right that's right yes yes we forget but- sometimes that that's not the united states because it's just like <laughs> It's still North America. Yeah, it's, it's our neighbors up north. Because the reason you forget, it's the time zone thing. The time zone's not any different, really. So mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. why we're just like, oh, yeah, they ran there. Well, even, I guess you could say, when Backlash back in May in Puerto Rico, it, it, it's they, people were saying out of country. I mean, it's it, or international show. It's still a U.S. territory, technically, if you want to. Right. Specific, it's almost like the what, 51st state, if you want to count it that. Hmm. But uh, I'm... Um, I'm excited for that idea. Now, granted, 
you know, me with my uh, uh, conspiracy theory or, <laughs> or thoughts, I feel like the timing of it is very sus considering, as we know, AEW has all in coming up end of August and they're selling mm-hmm. tickets really well. I think they're what, 75,000 so- sold? 70 have been sold, 75 okay. distributed is the word going around. Wow, they're so copying they, like 5,000 tickets. Apparently, apparently. Because Damn. according to WrestleTix, they okay. said that their number that they've been able to count is 75,000 distributed, put out there. Tony then did an interview last week that said we have sold around 70. That okay. was the last week. Okay, well, that's cool. Well, I mean, I'm... Um, I, so, needless to say... WWE teasing the idea of doing their biggest show in London. Mm-hmm. It, it definitely feels like it's a counter or to, to AEW because they know they're not going to let AEW have the record for the biggest wrestling outdoor wrestling show in London uh, on yeah. their watch. So it totally just feels like it's going to be a counter to that. Now, the only issue, well, though, it'll be a, a few years, right, for it to actually potentially oh, happen. It can't be next year because of Philly. Mm-hmm. IFO reported that they're working on the year after that, which is already being talked to as far as the United States city. So yes. it wouldn't be till 26 at the earliest. Now, yeah, so 24 or sorry, uh, 2024, yeah, it'd be Philly. 2025, is the rumor Minnesota? Did you I hear about I don't know, that? but okay. the, I've, I've read two different reports that said that they're in talks with the United States city for 2025. Okay, so yeah, 2026 could be the earliest they can get there. Right. So, But I think the timing for right now is a couple of things. A, see the interest, gauge it, get you know the parliament or whatever it is going, oh, well, we can pay you this much to come because yeah. they want to get paid. They yeah. want to get paid. Yeah. They don't go anywhere now unless they get, you know, there's a bid on it. Mm-hmm. And what are we going to get in, in return from WWE? But here's the other thing. You gauge the interest right now because their TV deals are coming up. Mm-hmm. And so if there's so much interest from fans in the UK for WWE programming, mm-hmm. that can help them get better TV deals. Yeah, because is their deal with BT Sports also coming up as well, I right. believe? Okay. And I, I read something the other day that BT is going to get, and I don't think this has any bearings on anything, bought by like Warner Brothers or something. Yes. Or Warner I, Brothers I, Discovery. I think it was Ariel Hawani was doing it, or... Um, I, I I saw something. No, um, oh my god, what's his name? I met him. Um British reporter, uh nice guy. Uh God, uh he's with uh, um he always is reports like Charlotte Flair's uh mm. n- like uh he's always like the one that kind of breaks like Charlotte Flair news gotcha. or, or at least get her side of the story. So it's like, hmm, so, who is sources? Um Andrew McCarthy. Uh I, Andrew, okay. is, yeah, is it, is it McCarthy? Yeah. Andrew McCarthy. Andrew McCarthy. He, that's right. He, I saw him doing an interview, and he was explaining that, yeah, the BT Sports deal is coming up. And, uh, yes, there's potentially, yeah, there could be new buyers or something yeah, like so that. So. so what I'm reading here from The Independent says that BT Sports is going to be purchased by Warner Brothers Discovery, which also owns Eurosport in the U.K., Okay, and in time, the two channels will be brought together under the TNT Sports brand. Interesting. Now, I don't think this is going to have any bearings on, oh, well, they, you know, Warner Brothers Discovery and TNT Sports, whatever, has AEW in the United States, so they can't mm-hmm. have WWE. I don't think that's going to matter mm-hmm. over there. Mm-hmm. That's going to be completely separate. So yeah. we'll see if that yeah. leads to anything. But I think WWE, having John Cena come out and tease the whole WrestleMania thing was for a number of reasons. A, gauge the interest and see how the internet goes. Mm-hmm. B, if the internet goes well, which they did and goes crazy for it, does you know the government there say, okay, we'll put up this much money for you guys to come? And then if that also happens and all the interest, then it goes, oh, well, there's a there's a craving for our content in your country. Give us more money on our next TV deal. So it's a, yeah. it a number of things, even yeah. though it can't happen for at least three years. Yeah, because I believe Cardiff paid for Clash at the Castle. Yes. Um, mind the bank? I don't know if London paid for no. it. They didn't. Okay. So because this was a whole, we're going to come here, we're going to do it in prime time, and we're going to show you that, hey, give us more money on our TV deal. That was the whole main reason for this yeah. was to show that there's a lot of interest in the UK for WWE, and we deserve to be here on a prominent network with prominent money. Gotcha. So, yeah, yeah. no, uh, 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 
Nick Khan. I give him credit, man. He's a smart guy, kind of knowing you know what to go after oh, yeah. and stuff. So it's uh, no, but it's still very cool for us fans seeing John Cena make a surprise appearance there, and and uh, like I said, Grayson Waller held his own. So um, now that Money the Bank has passed, and there's so much to talk about the fallout that we've seen so far on Raw and SmackDown over the last couple of weeks. Uh, let's talk about SmackDown first. Obviously, the show opened up with uh, Tribal Court with Roman Reigns. Uh, 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 I mean, they called it, yeah, Tribal Court, the trial of the Tribal Chief Roman Reigns. Mm. And, man, this was, what, nearly 40 minutes, like, what, 37 minutes, roughly. I was watching yeah. it live in real time before I, I headed out for the night. And more or less, I mean, the Usos confronted Roman Reigns, had some evidence uh, on the big screen of kind of showing his manipulation and just his behavior, how bad he treated his family members, and like this highlight montage video from the last couple of years and just how bad he is. And it, more or less Roman at that point sh- appeared, appeared to show some heart and started like tearing up and was like, I'm sorry. I was like the struggle to stay on top, be the tribal chief and stay champion. And he says, I'm tired. I don't want to do this anymore. And he told Jay, I want you to be the tribal chief and more or less hand over the the, mm. the the lay to him and he got down on one knee and uh i know uh the internet went crazy because he was wearing some like really fancy jordans and like <laughs> his feet were bending so he put like a crease uh, in the in the jordans I like 15, i buy 15 dollar walmart shoes every six <laughs> months i'm good i don't know shoes i know I, I took advantage of amazon prime day the other day buy some sneakers myself so i know you're preaching to the choir there but um so um but obviously, it was a big swerve. He uh, low blow Jay and uh, starting to beat the crap out of Jimmy. Him and Solo destroy Jimmy on the outside, which makes sense. I, Tim, I really enjoy this because he has every right to be pissed off. Mm-hmm. We saw him break down after Money in the Bank, where the Usos won when Jay pinned Roman Reigns. Roman yeah, has not deal. been pinned in what, over three years? Baron Corbin was the last person to pin him in December of 2021. Wow. 2019? Or? Hold on. No, no, I could be wrong. I was wrong there. It might be 2020. So 2019. 2019. Yeah. Because the the dog. Yeah. The dog. Yeah. yeah. Baron Corbin was last. TLC 2019 was the last time he was pinned. Now he had lost because he's lost like tag matches where like the Usos got pinned or something. But he hadn't been pinned or submitted. Yes. And so I know granted this was a tag match. So no titles on the line. For but he Jay, was the, the one that got pinned, though, not yeah, Solo. Exactly. And so I think, if anything, that was a big moral victory for the Usos and for mm. Jay specifically to pin his his cousin after the last three years of this story of you know Jay not agreeing with his cousin at first, but then ultimately getting beat up, falling in line, have great success together as the bloodline, but now obviously the Civil War and they're breaking up now. So what a what a crazy three years this has been. So yeah, great right. moral victory for Jay to pick up that pin on Roman. But yeah, so Roman after the match was just so distraught and like breaking down and like angry. Great performance. Yes, exactly. Which, so which if it wasn't for that actor strike that goes into effect tonight at midnight, <laughs> Hollywood should be calling this man because he had himself crying and everything down on one knee on SmackDown. Literal tears coming out of his eyes, not yeah, just like and- pretending to cry. Tears. Yeah, so what a performance. And so, yeah, no, they beat the crap out of Jimmy and just it made it, it made sense. Roman has been up until that point, what, five, six days, just like yeah. probably internally angry. And he just let it all on Jimmy and like mm-hmm. destroyed him. And Jimmy mm-hmm. got taken out on a, a stretcher. And Jay was like, I'm coming with you. I'm coming with you. And then ultimately at the end of the night when uh, uh, he came back, to the uh, to the arena. Actually, where's my? Don't have it here. But ultimately, Roman was in the ring. Jay came back, confronted him, and uh, they started fighting. And Roman was on the outside. Yeah. And Jay h- held up the title. So and Roman's yelling, "Put that down! Put that down!" <laughs> it's not official yet, but we all know it's going to lead yeah. to a one-on-one match at SummerSlam. So, Tim, where's kind of your thoughts on so the direction this- they're going now with this? Is this the Third Roman J match because we know we had a Hell so. in a Cell. They mm-hmm. had a match before Hell in a Cell. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think this is the third Roman J match throughout this story. And I mean, the Bloodline story has been phenomenal, the best thing in wrestling over the last couple of years in any mm-hmm. promotion. Whether yep. that's just 
Roman, the Usos, Solo, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens' involvement, like just all the different people that have been involved in it. And it's been amazing. It's yeah. been great. And so the segment from last Friday garnered huge ratings to the point where at one point during the first opening segment, there were mm-hmm. 3 million people watching the show at one point. It averaged out to like 2.5 something, but still, there was a spike at 3 million at one point. That's amazing. So it's like, other than like an NBA playoff game, football, sometimes maybe. a hockey playoff game or a football game, not many shows are going to be doing 3 million viewers. Like, again, it didn't get 3 million overall, it averaged out 2.5. But for a Friday night, that's great. 2.5 million. It was number one in the demo. It was great for everything. And now Fox is apparently categorizing it as entertainment instead of sport. I don't know why. Mm. But like, I guess one of the the head guys from Fox came out and said it on Twitter was like, hey, because he wanted to just tout the big ratings number. It was like, also, Mm -hmm. by the way, that was the first week that we're categorizing it as entertainment. And it was the number one entertainment property of the night and the week and this and that. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, no. WWE I, and and especially right now with the writer strike and now yeah. this new actor strike, wrestling is kind of a hot commodity because live sports is going to be what everybody needs, depending on how long these strikes go and when shows and movies can't be produced. I was okay. Two quick questions, maybe you know the right. answer. Okay, we know WWE wrestlers, superstars, they're not unionized. I know that's been a no. big thing. For decades, going back right. to Jesse Ventura trying to get them unionized. Well, even if it, even if they were to unionize, it'd be a wrestlers' union. It wouldn't probably be yeah, SAG. actors. Okay, that'd be okay. separate. I, like like Seth Rollins and Becky doing Marvel stuff. They they got their SAG card to do that, but it's separate from WWE. Okay, I was gonna say is like man, like this Drew, might be situ- Drew was supposed to go. I don't know if it's gonna happen now. Drew was supposed oh, to go film oh, a yeah. Batista movie Monday. Next, yeah, he, yeah. I don't know if that's gonna happen now because. Brand Drescher said, our SAG actor strike starts tonight at midnight. Oh, man. Such a bummer well, for Drew. Maybe Drew can show up and help Matt Riddle next week now. <laughs> okay. Well, that's what they look out for on Raw. Maybe, if, if Drew maybe. shows up, because he said on Raw, I, I can't be there next week. You're on your own. But now, yeah. that'd be a good little plot twist. I'm here, buddy, for you. I'm back. <laughs> so, yeah. um, no, I, I, okay. So, so in a situation, yeah. Live pro wrestling is going to be great one. So now with the strike going on, I know we're going off on the entertainment news. Mm-hmm. Everything that's going on right now is going to be halted. I Any, believe anything that's in from, production. What, from what I read today, it's a full on actor strike where you're not allowed. They even said, cause like next week is San Diego comic-con and they were saying something about the strike even uh, includes like not promoting upcoming projects at comic-con or something wow. if i read it right that's just something i read a tweet i read okay. on twitter that could okay. be right could be wrong but i can see it if, if it's a full actor strike oh we don't want you promoting anything coming up it says they can't do any like movie premieres until this is figured out and this and that so oh, no uh, yeah i'm sorry i'm uh thinking out <laughs> loud um <laughs> uh uh i was supposed to have or in a couple weeks uh anthony mackie come by for an interview in per- oh, nice. the, the 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 metal sh- um twisted thing metal. Samo- um yeah, yeah, twisted, twisted metal. metal on peacock mm-hmm. with samoa yeah. joe and stuff i wonder if we can't do that anymore i don't know we'll we'll see sorry i'm speaking out loud i, I probably shouldn't be saying too much but i mean but that was like an interview right. i have uh, coming up that i was looking forward to so this so. says this says during the strike this is from cnbc during the strike actors will not be permitted to promote past projects through com- conventions interviews or panels this includes any emmy award campaigning nominations for the annual award shows were announced wednesday and the ceremony will take place in september heading into negotiations last month hollywood performers were looking to improve wages working conditions health and pension benefits and more so yeah and it says they can't promote past projects so i don't know if that means anything upcoming is still okay but i did see that this could affect comic-con next week okay well I'll keep you posted if, uh, <laughs> right. uh, if something happens. Because my goal of when he comes in, I was going to ask about working with Samoa Joe and working mm-hmm. with Seth Rollins. So, oh, yeah, he uh, did work with both of them because, yeah. Samoa Joe's Twisted yeah. Metal and, and then Seth, Seth Rollins, Rollins is gonna be Captain America. 
cap four. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I'll keep you posted. If it I, happens forgot about or the not. Seth thing. I forgot about the Seth thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he's definitely got his experience working with wrestlers. So, right. Um, yeah. So with that being said, it's just uh, uh, this whole bloodline thing has been awesome to watch and just very exciting and just not to get on my soapbox here, but this is an example, like why AEW, please, you know, work on your storylines because this was nearly 40 minutes of not wrestling. Now, sure, they get physical and had the beat down on Jimmy on the outside. Right. But when you have like storytelling and like real emotions and these wrestlers engaging with each other, it, it, it's compelling stuff to tune in. And, you know, I wish AEW would do more of that. I know this is not AEW versus WWE talk right now, but still, I just when I see that, see three million, I'm like, wow, AEW's potential could be they're always staying around 800,000 for so, the ratings. I don't know. To just, give them credit, this Adam Cole MJF stuff yes. storyline wise has been pretty good. Yes, it's been exactly the closest WWE style story that I've seen them do in a very long time. Exactly. I, I do agree with you there on that one. So um, but yeah, I mean with bloodline thing. So now <laughs> just throw it out there. Jay Uso's chances of winning here. Well, I mean, that's the big question. It's like half did a he percent. actually do? What's that? I'll give him half a percent. Half a percent. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I still want Cody. I think for Roman Reigns, for how long this title reign is. Now, granted, I know they try to make SummerSlam like WrestleMania 2.0 vibe. Hmm. But considering this historic title reign that he's on, especially in the modern era, for him to drop that title, it should be done on the biggest stage for that company, which is a WrestleMania. Do you think Cody has to wait a whole other year? Because I don't think anybody beats him but Cody. That's just my opinion. I don't have yeah, any knowledge me too, of that. No. But. I, I agree. I want that. Now, how we get there, though, does Cody win the Royal Rumble again? I mean, maybe. Or, or I mean, he elimin- has. He kind of has. Chamber. He kind of has to being on the other brand. Yeah. The only thing I can think of. So, Money in Bank is I mean, now the hasn't, question. Hasn't Austin won Rumble twice in a row? Yes, he did. So he it's didn't it's win not back. unprecedented. Correct. Uh, but, you know. A lot of uh, jumping back to Money in the Bank. I know Ellie Knight did not win, but he was the crowd favorite. But someone did a, a, like a comparison. It's like, oh, well, Drew did not win Money in the Bank in 2019, but he won Royal Rumble 2020. Mm-hmm. Uh, who was it? Shinsuke did not win Money in the Bank 2017, but won Rumble 2018. True. So, so everyone's like, that. so everyone's like, oh, Ellie Knight, the fa- crowd favorite, did not win. Could he be a Royal Rumble favorite? I I, I think I don't right think now. So. Early favorite for me is still Gunther. I I think Gunther could be the favorite for Royal Rumble. I'm I know we're still months away from right. that, but um, I think for Cody, yeah, Royal Rumble or Elimination Chamber, something like that could mm-hmm. could happen for him. But uh, but no, I'm sure Jay is going to put on an amazing match. It's going to be full of dramatic. Oh, yeah. My one thing though for that main event, please do a different finish. Like, other than like a ref bump, some interference from the bloodline, or I guess now at this point be solo. I, I'm sure Jimmy will make his big return there mm. after being written off for a couple weeks. But right. Give us something different, please. <laughs> like Roman's been winning the matches all the same way for a while now. So that, okay. that's my right. that's my one yeah. thing. So, so uh, I agree with that. So but I think the match is going to be really fun, going to be really good. We've seen these two have good matches in the past, and mm-hmm. Jay's just getting better. Like, you wouldn't think 10, 12 years after he debuted in WWE, you could say that the guy's still getting better. Yeah, absolutely. Him yeah. and his brother. Uh, and nothing against uh, Jimmy, but I've always thought Jay was the better Uso. I'm just going to say yeah. it. Yeah, no, if you get a chance, I watched uh, Ari Hawani's interview with the Usos. Yes. It was very, very good stuff, and mm-hmm. he was like, it makes you want to root for them even more, just how oh, yeah. passionate they are about the business and stuff. I really did enjoy that. Um, all right, well, let's jump on over to Raw real quick because you know it seems like while SmackDown has the bloodline, the big faction overseeing the blue brand, over on Raw, the big faction over there is the Judgment Day, and they've really been you know, p- post, I, I, I would say, post-WrestleMania, post-Backlash. They've really just, for the last few months, have really just been like the main the A storyline for yes. for Monday Night Raw. And it's been really good stuff, exciting stuff. And um, for the last couple of Raws, we've been seeing a lot of 
potential drama and dissension amongst the group. Obviously, this goes back to Money in the Bank when Damien Priest ultimately did win the Money in the Bank Money, mm-hmm. Money in the Bank briefcase, which I like how I didn't even think about this beforehand, but I like he's been calling himself Senior Money in the Bank. I was like, so that, that's did a you cool hear, twist. Did you hear Kevin Patrick on Raw when he was like, El Senor Money in the Bank? And Corey Graves goes, <laughs> it's not El, it's just Senor, Patrick. Yes. Yeah. Dude, th- this Raw this week, it was there was a couple times Corey Graves was like going on and on, and then he like said he's a brain fart. <laughs> yeah, or he would like stop and he's like, Pat or, uh, Kevin, like please jump in and save yeah. me here. I was like, like Damn, yeah, I was on live TV. Like, what the hell? Like, hey, whatever. Yeah, like are, they love Corey are, Graves. He can kind of do whatever he wants. I guess he can just ramble on, but then the second yeah. he he <clears throat> you know. Uh, loses it. He just calls out Kevin Patrick. Please mm. save me on save live me, TV. Yeah, um, which I I know the crowd wanted LA Knight to win, and we talked about this on the predictions video a couple weeks ago. Was Logan Paul? I thought was like the best business pick potentially mm-hmm. for eyeballs, bringing eyeballs to the WWE brand. But I think the best pick for storylines to cut to take place after the pay per view was with Damian Priest and Damian Priest oh, yeah. ultimately win once and it makes sense. And you know, at Money in the Bank, Seth versus Finn, Damian comes out during the match, sits ringside, and then like towards the finish, he stands up, looks like he's ready to kind of cash in. Ultimately Finn got distracted. Seth was able to capitalize, pick up the win, and immediately Seth and Finn I was I'm sorry, uh Finn and Damian, they're probably the same faction, but they're like looking at each other, hey man, you cost me the match and that carried over to Raw. They were kind of pissed off at each other. Like, can I dress you? Like, dude, are you going to try to catch? If oh, I no. won, you're going to so, catch? Not to cut you off, but like yeah, the way that match ended on Raw after Money in the Bank with the yeah. whole bloodline. So with like, because this, I thought this was fantastic where they're on the apron arguing. Dominic's no, yeah, like, yeah. stop, stop. Look, Seth's getting away. If you want to cash in, go now. And then, then like, they're still yelling at each other. She's like, I'll go oh, stop yeah. him for you. Seth takes him out on the outside with the pedigree. So then they go back to check on Dom. Rhea's cradling Dom like a baby. You're looking at uh, Damien and Finn. She's like, stop, stop. And like, just the way that last shot of that episode of Raw was like, oh my God, if the Bloodline storyline's a 10, this is a nine. That's right. And, yeah. And, and Finn showed up at the very end and kind of prevented Damien the DQ from and all yeah. that. Yeah. I'm just like, if the Bloodline storyline is considered a 10, this Judgment Day stuff's a nine. Yes, in my absolutely. It, it, it's it's a smart move on Triple H's booking part. You know, if he was able to get to, to the final say on this, and and he didn't even Vince. like the group when he took over, <laughs> at least <laughs> reportedly. Yeah, exactly. Now so it's, now it's like as big as Seth Rollins, if not bigger than Seth on Raw. I know it's crazy. So, uh, uh, but then this week on Raw, the carryover from that was like. Uh, you know, where they're at now, like they ended on a bad note last Monday Night Raw. How's that going to carry over to this week's episode mm. of Raw? It's still Rhea trying to play Peacemaker, though. Yeah, I mean, Finn Balor walked out on Rhea Ripley and Dominic. They were in the ring. Um, Seth comes out eating chicken wings. Three yeah. chicken wings. Oh, I'll fight you again tonight, Dom. <laughs> yes, yeah, so that led to a match. Uh, in the backstage area, Rhea's trying to say, you guys need to get on the same page. Can yeah. you work this out? Ultimately, it led to um, uh, uh, Judgment Day's three-on-one attack on Seth Rollins, and then the tag team champions, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, came and made the save, mm-hmm. and led to a three-on-three match for the main event here. Um, Judgment Day ultimately picked up the win um, after, let's see, Damian Priest hits South of Heaven, uh, Finn Balor sealed the win with the coup de gras. Mm-hmm. So... Well, they won two nights in a row because they won on NXT last night, too. Or two nights ago. Yeah, I didn't have a chance to watch NXT yet. How was that? I liked it. Okay. I, I didn't see the whole show, but I, 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 knew, I saw the main event and a couple other things on the show. And the match was good. Like, Trick Williams is another guy that I've kind of been like, meh on. Yeah. But he's least... also getting better. Yeah. And improving. And he was good in that match with Judgment Day. Nice. Okay. Um. Oh, that's right. So, Rhea Ripley interfered she grabbed uh um uh whose was it was it Seth's foot I, I can't remember now i'm sorry right now but uh i think she, it was sammy going for a haluva kick on, yeah, on monday right yeah so yeah he, i think there, it was sammy going for a haluva kick so Rhea, you know grabbing the leg ultimately helped judgment day counter mm-hmm. back and picked up the win so everyone was smiling so Rhea, 
I think probably felt like she's being peacemaker. Yep. She helped the team win. When the team wins, everyone's feeling good, back on the same page. So I'm I'm sure this is gonna lead to you know things are fine right now, but you know it, a lot can happen in the coming weeks. So how are you feeling about the direction of the Judgment Day right now, and like where can this all lead to at some point? Because I, you were telling me off the air, the rumor is Seth and Finn rematch at SummerSlam. Right. I'm sure Damien's still going to be lurking in the background. and But also, so you, you got Seth and Finn rematch at SummerSlam, according to a new report from Dave Meltzer. But mm-hmm. then also, I think coming off of that six-man tag on Monday, we can also see at SummerSlam the tag titles on the line with Damien and Dirty Dom challenging Sammy and Kevin. So then you got Bloodline, or not Bloodline, Judgment Day going for both sets, the world title and the tag titles, potentially. That's no right. one's reported I, I, Judgment Day going for the tag titles, but that's the only thing they've really set up for Kevin and Sammy. Like, exactly. What else do they have? Actually, I'm writing that down right now. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> the list here we had, we talked off the air, it looks like 11 potential matches, which we'll kind of go through down this real quick. Yeah, I Pot- can see it. Potentially. So, what are you, okay, for Judgment Day, I think it's a bad move if they were to break up the group now in some capacity. 100%. 100%, 100% I think, bad. if anything, you see the bloodline, how if you take your time, do a slow mm-hmm. burn, it can lead to really entertaining, long-form, dramatic storyline here. Yes. And if this is your A story on Monday Night Raw, you don't want to rush through and break this up. I think you can have Damien be. I think a lot of people think Damien might cash in at some or something. I think you could like hold off for a long time. I would wait. I would yeah, wait. You could wait. You could wait a couple months, maybe at, at least. Mm-hmm. So I, I think for me personally, and, and let me know if you agree with this. I think the Judgment Day they should do uh, the Golden Prophecy, like Undisputed Era and NXT. I like let let Try to get all the belts. Yeah, get all the belts for Judgment Day. I mean, Rhea's got the women's title right now. Well, almost all the belts. They ain't taking that icy title from Gunter. <laughs> oh no, no, no! But but I mean, as far as every member in that group right. could have yeah, a, a title, exactly. So, do you think potentially, you know, early predictions? Maybe uh, Finn picks up the win at SummerSlam over Seth, and then uh, yeah, well, maybe w- maybe the Dom and uh, Damian can pick up the tag titles. I think for me, I would like to see Seth win because. Remember the last time he fought, uh, not Seth win, Finn win. Because remember the last time they fought at SummerSlam. Seth Mm -hmm. lost to Finn with a title on the line. Mm -hmm. So we Mm -hmm. can do a storyline of, hey, you can't beat me at SummerSlam. Now, SummerSlam really doesn't matter in per se because, you know, it's like, oh, it's just another night anyways. I'm like, Undertaker can't be beat at WrestleMania, but we can beat him at every other (laughs) pay-per-view. Yeah. But but it's, it's like, what's the big difference? I don't know. But it's like they could do a story here of, so we're coming back to SummerSlam. Last time we fought at SummerSlam, I beat you. And then what if Finn does ultimately beat beat Seth for the title at SummerSlam? And he can be like, that's my new, that's my big show. I'm the mm-hmm. best at SummerSlam. Granted, just, he did lose to the Fiend at SummerSlam a few years yeah. back, but that's a whole other story. He could be Mr. SummerSlam moving forward. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and so yeah. I, w- I would like for Finn to win the belt. I think it would be great to see Finn with a title because – he only had a 24-hour title reign before, and it was yeah. Triple H that wanted him to have that universal title. Now that Triple H is technically in charge, as much as that means now, mm-hmm. could he go back to that and say, hey, I want to give Finn what I wanted to give him in 2016? Yeah. I, yeah, He was one-day universal champion, two-time NXT champion. Mm. I'm sure he wants to you know, take that to the next level and give him a real title reign on, on the main roster. So. Yeah. I, I can see that. So I can see Damien and Dom going for the tag titles. I, I and, think I saw someone said, or go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So the other thing with Finn winning though, helps delay Damien's cash in. Exactly. You don't have to be like, Oh, well, Seth still has the, the belt. When's Damien going to cash in on him? No, it's Finn's got the belt. Well, he ain't cashing in anytime soon. Oh, wait, could he go to the other show? Yeah. He's make, that. Yeah. He's SmackDown. The other thing I forgot who was it Twitter or something. Someone said, well, they kind of retcon the money in the bank briefcase, like cash in on any title you want. So could he actually, could Damien change his mind and 
make it for the tag titles, which I think is no, that's such a dumb no. idea. No, but, if I if I have that contract, I'm going for the biggest title that I can get um that's available to me. So is, Corey Graves did say on on Raw this week before Judgment Day went to, to NXT, Carmelo Hayes, watch out because Damian's got the briefcase and can cash in on anybody. Yeah. And remember last year when for some random reason they had Austin Theory show up at the end of an NXT episode and yeah. hold the briefcase up, didn't say a word, no nothing, and then never followed up on that. And then what was it? Three years ago, no, no, two years ago, Edge showed up on NXT and like confronted Finn Balor, who's champion mm-hmm. at the time. So, I mean, I, even Charlotte used her Royal Rumble win to go for the NXT championship. That's right. Yeah. So, I, if I'm Damian Priest, man, you use that briefcase to get the the number one title you can get, yeah. the, 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 the A title or, you know, in this case, the world main roster world belts. Yeah, yeah world exactly. Title. Do not waste your time at any lower tier title. <laughs> so, uh, but no, with that being said, I think the story here first is you get them back on the same page. Everyone gets a title. You mm. run with that for a bit. You could sell cool merch with all of them holding titles, kind of like the bloodline oh, yeah. merch. You can do, you could capitalize on this to the fullest. And then down the road, when everyone starts losing titles one by one, that can lead to the breakdown and then exactly. therefore reintroduce the money in the bank briefcase, how that can play into this drama, and then mm-hmm. and then maybe eventually break up the judgment day. But yeah, right. you you ride this for as long as you can. If anything, mm-hmm. the bloodline is the new template now. So use that to the full oh, yeah. Um speaking of other matches potentially for SummerSlam, while it's not official, the 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 challenge has been thrown out there. Cody Rhodes. So was it last Monday? He comes out to the ring in gear to confront Seth, but then Brock Lesnar comes out, destroys him. Then Cody shows up later in the show in a suit. So I'm like, wait, you just change outfits? Like yeah, that was that was unneeded. But they like, oh, we gotta fill five minutes. Yeah, do your so whole he, entrance. <laughs> that's why he had to. <laughs> so uh, and then this week on Raw, he comes out to the ring and just cuts this promo more or less challenges Brock Lesnar hmm. for a rubber match at SummerSlam, which I assume. Brock is going to accept, and oh, yeah. it's going to lead to the match. How are you feeling about this rivalry? I think a lot of people have been very critical. Has this rivalry helped elevate Cody Rhodes and add to his story of kind of need to overcome the odds to justify him going after the world title again? So I don't think it's done anything to hurt Cody, but I don't okay. think it's done anything to help him either. He think he's still... Okay exactly where he was coming out of WrestleMania for one real reason. Has Brock still even said why he's done all this to Cody? No. Why no. he's attacked no. Cody Rhodes? Because it's not like if, because because the stipulation is there of he can't challenge Roman for the belt because he lost at SummerSlam. So it's not like if he beats Cody, all of a sudden he's the new number one contender. Even Correct. though Cody said on Monday, once I beat Brock, I'm back next in line. This is not a number one contenders match at SummerSlam. Never said so I don't Brock has still not said why oh, I was buddy buddy with you. I was hugging you. I was shaking your hand. Let's team up. Never mind. Brock is still not given. Now I get why Brock is mad now because Cody busted his face up. So now Brock wanted the revenge. Then Brock beat him. They're one and one. I don't know if Brock cares as much about Co- as Cody does about rubber matches and getting the ultimate victory of being better than you, but. Yeah, the, I think Cody's still in the same spot he was coming out of WrestleMania. No better, no worse. And we're just kind of just sitting here waiting for the time when they finally build him back up to Roman. That's what I think it really is. Like, he's no better, no worse, and we're just waiting for, when's your next match with Roman? Sorry, when you said better than you, I was going to go, baby. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I held back. So, um, I know some people are saying, like, this whole feud with Brock, he could have easily done it as... WWE champion. This, these are the same people who thought Cody should have won at WrestleMania. And that would have made so I, more sense why Brock would go after him because if he had the belt, Brock can challenge again. Right now, yeah. Brock can't challenge for that Universal Heavyweight Championship. But if yeah. Cody had it, oh, you got, you got a belt? Yep. Mm-mm, I want the belt. I can go for you. I'm not allowed yeah. to go for Roman. Yeah. So it, it, it's going to be interesting how they're going to, this match is going to play out here. I, I, right. I, I assume Cody's going to win. I know, like, finally he took uh, the brace or uh, the cast off now. Yeah, but he did that I can, at 
money in the bank when they were like, because Michael Cole was like, we spoke to doctors today and they said that Cody should be basically healed if he wants to take it off. And then he took it off. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, uh, no, I, I'm with you as far as they were kind of like teasing the cast. I, I, I don't, I was going to say, I give Cody Crepe kayfabe at public appearances, celebrating Brandy's birthday. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say, sorry, everywhere. excuse me. Yeah, everywhere he wore that cast. So I gave him credit for for. I mean, <laughs> I mean, he's a worker just like his dad. His dad <laughs> played it up in person and in private, and all. Of, he learned from the best. His dad, Rick, yeah. all of them back in the day. They, Undertaker, you, yeah, you're in public. True. You you live the gimmick. Yeah, still, exactly. You know, so what, what did the Rock's dad say? On on Young Rock, living the gimmick, always live the gimmick. Yeah, absolutely. So I give Cody credit. Like all the photos from Brandy's birthday party had mm-hmm. the cast on still. Yep. I so, loved it. Uh, but no, for for Cody, I'm excited for the match. Partly maybe because it finally it's going to be the final one. And it's going to wrap it up, yeah. and then maybe Cody can move on to something else come fall season for but for what? WWE. I don't know though. I don't, I don't either. Know. That's the hard part. It's Man, like, how do you keep him busy? Yeah. So here's here's an idea. Does he eventually sa- challenge Seth but get screwed and lose? Have a great match, or, or and Finn. then something happens. He's not going to beat Seth. He's not going to win a world title till he beats gets Roman's belt. He said it in Money in the Bank. Yeah. Seth's doing great things with that title, but the story is the belt my dad didn't have, which is the yeah. lineage of Roman's title. So exactly, I think there's a slight chance maybe... He becomes a number one, like they do like a number one contenders tournament on Raw. He wins it somehow and goes and challenges Seth, but loses. And then that is really where he builds himself back up to Royal Rumble and wins the Rumble to challenge Roman. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they <laughs> it's going to be inter- interesting where WWE goes come fall. As far as I think what reports say, SummerSlam is going to be the end of the bloodline storyline, the civil war here that's been going on. Potentially, and yeah, I think. I kind of wonder, just throwing it out there, wonder if Bray Wyatt comes back and attacks Roman Reigns. Like they say, he's th- still three out years with later. illness. Yeah, so I don't know what's going on with Bray. Yeah, it's uh, it'd be interesting to see what how they keep Roman occupied. Yeah, for the next few months. So, and and same well, thing for Cody. Thing. I don't past SummerSlam. I don't see where they go with Seth or Roman. Hmm. Both mm-hmm. world titles. Yeah. So, but hey, that's on Triple H's <laughs> play <laughs> right now to figure out. So, um, a couple, we'll power through the rest of these here because those are like the big stories. But, yeah. you know, on, over on SmackDown, we see Asuka dealing with not one, but two competitors, Charlotte Flair, Bianca Belair. Like, they're all mm. going back and forth, trading shots. Uh, on SmackDown last week, we saw... Uh, 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 Actually, was it on SmackDown this or it might have been the week before? I'm before, sorry. If you're talking about the Charlotte title match, that was before Money in the Bank. Okay. So where um uh that's right. Is that where EO attempted to cash in? Was that last week or the week before? Well, so the the attempt I think was last week, but yes. the Charlotte title match was the week before that Bianca had the the ticket. And she got yes. involved and all yeah, that. Yeah, stuff. Yeah. That was the week before, two weeks so, ago. But on, on SmackDown last week, though, we saw EO come yes. down, attempted to cash in, right. handed the briefcase to Bailey, and then Bailey was trying to give it to the ref. But um, well, remember what EO said at the Money in the Bank press conference? This isn't just my briefcase, this is Damage Control's briefcase. And Bailey was like, oh, yeah. Sure, it's both of ours. And she started hugging it, right? Huh? It's like, so anyway, it, it was a failed, I mean, not a failed cash in, it was a failed attempt. Yeah, to cash in. So nothing happened. But I think the point being add the drama. Okay, you got Asuka, uh, Bianca, Charlotte all going kind of at it. And in the background, you got EO and Bailey lurking in on mm-hmm. this. I assume it's going to lead to a triple threat match between the three of them at right. SummerSlam. And then I don't know, does EO maybe cash in that night? Or I can like, see it. I mean, but, a big cash in at SummerSlam would not be a bad idea. Yes, exactly. From either either money in the bank winner. But I wonder I, I assume EO and Bailey, one's gonna turn on the other. I, I mm-hmm. assume Bailey's gonna be the one that turns because she's the Probably. one that the that the actual briefcase owner. Could and that there's, lead there's to, way more money in EO as a baby face? Exactly. So 
I just I, I kind of want Oscar to retain and then have Oscar and EO go into a program. But at the briefcase, awesome. I, I don't know if they'll have time. They'll just maybe go in for a cash in and then. Well, they can do EO cashes rematch. in and wins the. Yeah, they could do EO cashes in, wins the belt from Oscar. Oscar's pissed off, wants a rematch to get her belt back, and then they have a little program with EO and Oscar. And then you can always visit EO and Bailey at some point. So. Yeah. It's not exciting. I'm 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 really digging in kind of the direction they're going with the women's division over on SmackDown. So. What if, what mm-hmm. if, EO wins, Oscar gets her rematch, and Bailey cost EO the title in the rematch to Oscar, and that leads to the because Bailey's jealous, yep. of EO's success, and then that leads to Oscar gets the belt back, and mm-hmm. Bailey and EO go at it, and then eventually maybe the winner of that gets a number one contender match. Or, Potentially, uh, for yeah. a tile match for for Oscar. Yeah, I'm all for it. And with it, all that, we all still have to remember. I don't know when this episode's going to officially drop, but this week on SmackDown, Bianca is challenging Oscar for the belt. I assume Charlotte interrupts just like Bianca did. Exactly, return the favor, as they yeah. say. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited for the women's division for the around surrounding the title picture there. Over on Raw, though, Rhea is just she's just more or less you know supporting judgment day but mm. she hasn't wrestled too much she had the match with natty was it last week yeah she's been eyeballing raquel like they've been having like stare downs and stuff i'm guessing that's gonna lead to a match between the two of them even though raquel yeah. currently right now is the well, one she, she finally like stepped to raquel this week and was like hey stay out of my business or else yeah like she, so, she confronted her in gorilla so i wonder <clears throat> I have a feeling, I'm just guessing here, maybe the women's tag titles gets defended maybe the night before SummerSlam. Well, they're, they're on the line down. next Monday. That's right. Yeah, next I'm Monday for Raw. Defending against Sonya and Chelsea. I just wonder if Rhea's going to have a match at SummerSlam. That's my... Yeah, it's the, the, the match that everyone's reporting is her and Raquel for the title. Okay, so maybe something happens on Raw this week to kind of set it up for that, which is, yeah, yeah. I'm all for that. Um, well, maybe of Rhea another- and Dom, maybe Rhea and Dom cause some sort of distraction that cost them the tag titles or something. Mm, okay. Well, another match in the women's division that we're all kind of excited for is Ronda versus Shayna. So at Money in the Bank, Shayna just out of nowhere turned on Ronda Rousey, beat her up, ultimately cost them the tag titles, and that's how Raquel and Liv got back the women's tag team mm-hmm. titles. What do you think about that turn at Money in the Bank? It was just kind of sudden. People were kind of complaining. Oh, they didn't like give clues. It just was so out of nowhere. So, I digged it. I think with the turn, they've messed it up since. I liked the yes. turn. I liked yeah. it. But Ronda shouldn't be the baby face. And this past <laughs> week on Monday, Ronda was the baby face. Shayna was the heel. That's the opposite way they need to do this. Especially with that promo Shayna cut of, no one wants you here. You've taken mm-hmm. the spotlight and didn't have to earn it. I yeah. earned my spot here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I you agree. just come in and do whatever you want. And so she cut the babyface promo that all the women want to say to Rhonda. And then this past week, she's the bully beating up Emma. Mm-hmm. So it's like, eh, and then Rhonda comes to Emma's save, or aid or whatever. Mm-hmm. So but Shayna laid in that awesome kick in oh, the yeah. Rhonda's face. Oh, yeah. And Rhonda, to her credit, she's great at selling. So she really yeah. sold that, that kick or the knee to the face. Yeah, you're right. I think Rhonda should be the heel here. Shayna, her promos, I think we're all agree. Like, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, Shayna, you're right. I support you in this situation here. Exactly. I totally agree. Nonetheless, I, I now I think why they're kind of fumbling this is it's all been kind of rushed, right? Because was it Meltzer reported that she has Ronda Rousey has a hard out with WWE, and a lot of people are, are speculating it's going to be right after SummerSlam. Yeah, so and so they're kind of rushing this feud. Just mm-hmm. it's like one last hurrah for Ronda. So the report basically was that they were supposed to win the tag titles right after WrestleMania. Ronda had the arm injury or whatever. They had to yeah. delay that. They finally got the tag titles, and then Ronda tells the company, "Hey, so uh, this is my date. I'm done after this day. This is my heart out." And so they had to just rush everything. Yeah, it's unfortunate because you with this feud, this could have been something maybe stretched over a couple months. But yeah, now at this point, it looks like it's just going to well, be slowly teased of yeah. Rhonda being the big star. Shayna, you know, Rhonda kind of a slow, like mm-hmm. I could have saw something, and this is just fantasy booking, of course. Maybe Rhonda slowly would be 
talking down to Shayna, maybe. Maybe just like, I'm the bigger star. You're here because of me. They would have never looked at you. Be, you know, just saying mm -hmm. certain things like Shayna trying to do things and want to be like, whoa, 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 I got this, or I'll take it. And then finally Shayna yep. goes, no, I'm not beneath you. We should be equals. But if you're not going to treat me like that, then here we go. And then Boom. Th there's just no time to, to tease and build it up. Exactly. So I hope that match does happen at SummerSlam. Just, I think. It, yeah, it's the plan. Yeah, cool. Um, speaking of IC titles, we mentioned earlier, Gunther. It looks like him and Drew are going to have a program. Drew made a big return at Money in the Bank. And over the last couple of weeks, um, you know, made the save help Riddle after Riddle got the beat down from Imperium at Money in the Bank. Now it looks like Drew and like Riddle is like the one who finds new people to become buddies with. You know, he had Randy Orton. Well, that's he the had, whole point. He's got Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn for a while. Now Drew's his new buddy. He's just looking mm. for a friend. So, uh, you know, Gunther or, or Imperium have been going after Riddle and Drew. Ultimately, this is going to lead to a match for Drew McIntyre versus Gunther. I'm excited for this match. Because while I enjoy the triple threat at WrestleMania, I do want to see Gunther versus Drew one on one. Yeah, We're finally gonna get it. You know, it's gonna be two big hosses slapping the hell out of oh, each yeah. other. And well, what does what Big E say? Two big meaty men <laughs> slapping beef. <laughs> yeah, you go slapping beef. That's what it is. So I, I, you know me, I love Drew McIntyre. He's he's a friend of the show. He's been on it like twenty thousand times on this program. <laughs> so on this podcast, but. I, unfortunately, I, I I know Gunther's gonna win here. I think you know they want him to break Honky Tonk's record. So oh, that'd be great if he does. Yeah. So if he wins here, then he's like one month or a month and a half closer to being Honky Tonk. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I know there's not a prediction episode yet, but but yeah, I, I it's it's a match that weekend, SummerSlam weekend. I'm gonna look forward to and. Um, you know, you kind of brought up earlier Drew's status. Maybe he does show up on Raw now. He doesn't have no no movie to yeah, film right if now. They're not filming. Yeah. Um, also this week on Raw, we saw Logan Paul make an appearance. And this stems from at Money in the Bank. Him and Ricochet were in the Money in the Bank uh, men's <clears throat> match. And they had that I hate to say botch, but a spot in the match. Yeah. It was supposed to be a Spanish fly on the two tables on the outside. And uh, they they both didn't get land, the full rotation. Full rotation. They kind of landed shoulder, head, neck first into the tables. It hurt. Um, and then they had the backstage brawl after the match as well. Mm. And this now led to the confrontation. <laughs> I give Ricochet an A for credit or uh, for, yeah, credit for attempting the promo. You know, he's not the best guy on the microphone. Right. I think he gave great. Great effort there. A for effort, I should say. Logan Paul came out and just kind of was roasting him. I mean, that's... I know Logan Paul's so, the heel. I'm glad he's embracing being a heel. But, dude, he was roasting Ricochet out there. Well, here's my thing. I compare this to an old Sasha Banks promo where he's trying too hard to be hated. He just okay. has to be him yeah. and he gets hated. But he did the whole, like, just the mannerisms and the yeah. fake laughing yeah, it just it really gave me Sasha Banks vibes of I'm gonna try really hard to not be liked here, even though people sometimes do and sometimes don't. Like. I think this was and it's hard to say because I've liked everything Logan Paul's done in WWE thus far. His worst promo, mm -hmm. his worst on screen appearance because mm -hmm. he was, I think, trying too hard to be the bad guy. When if he just is himself and lets the fans boo him like they're going to, he's mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. But he was just uh, again not to beat a dead horse, trying a little too hard to be a heel. When he yeah. just comes off as a natural, not likable guy, anyways. So I think a lot of people wanted maybe L.A. Knight versus Logan Paul at SummerSlam. It looks like they're going to go with Ricochet yeah. here, which I, I kind of see why it makes sense because I have a feeling Logan Paul's going to win, or Logan Paul they want him to get a win because he hasn't won in a in a minute. If it was going to him in L.A. Knight, the fans would probably riot if L.A. Knight lost a big match well, like that. I think this is going to be a better match. No, nothing against LA Knight. He's good in the ring. I think it's going to be the better match anyways. Yeah. So Ricochet and it, they go at it. it. It's, I love the callback. Ricochet, you know, took the the leap and dive, or excuse me, a uh, uh, flip out of the ring. Right. Callback what he did a few years ago with Velveteen Dream on NXT. Mm -hmm. 
So it was cool. It, I, I'm excited for that match. You know, it's going to be high flying. It's going to be a lot of great fun spots here. Their chemistry is really good. Obviously, we saw the Royal Rumble, Money in the Bank. So it's um, that's going to be probably maybe a sleeper, very fun match right. for the fans and to I think, get into. I think with this match, it's something different for Logan Paul. So when, yeah. when all the reports came out on possible matches for SummerSlam, there was a match listed as Logan Paul Showcase. Logan Paul's never had a guy one-on-one -on -one like Ricochet that he can go out there and do mm. big, spectacular spots with. So this can be their CMLL New Japan-style match where you go out there and it's just spots and spots and spots. Their AEW match, their Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, Will Ospreay match. I was going to say, you know, hey, mm. Logan Paul, if you're listening to this, just watch Ricochet versus Will Ospreay from years right. ago and for inspiration of what kind of match like, you can do. Because Will Ospreay's had good match with The Miz. Good match with Roman Reigns. Great mm -hmm. match with Seth Rollins. But now he goes in there with Ricochet and can have a New Japan-style, high-flying, just acrobatic, cool-move match. Mm -hmm. Something mm -hmm. different. We Like he kind of did with Seth, have a bunch of cool moves. But this is going to be even different and more elevated on that style. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, no, it's going to be really looking forward to that. Uh, another match probably that we can see happen here, and this has been rumored for months now, is Becky Lynch versus Trish Stratus. This week on Raw, Zoe Stark picked up a big win over Becky Lynch, but that was obviously with distraction involved. With did, uh, you, uh, did you know that finish was the same finish from, I don't know when, but years ago in a Trish Stratus Molina match? Really? Yes. I saw everyone was talking about it on Twitter. I didn't know, but everyone was talking about it on Twitter. I, there was somebody, I don't know the full details of it, but there was like another female at ringside, okay. caused the distraction, and then. Chris gets rolled up by Molina. Same mm. way Zoe rolls up Becky. It was a callback to like 2005, 2006 maybe or something. Okay. Well, this is definitely going to lead to more motivation for Becky Lynch want to get her revenge on Trish Stratus. And it's because they had the match at what was it? No, uh, was it back or Night of Champions? I'm trying to uh, no, Night of Champions, they wrestle each mm. other. So, uh, mm. yeah, get the rematch at SummerSlam here. So, I'm sure Becky, that's right, Zoe Stark debuted there, helped yeah. Trish get the win. So, I'm sure Becky will get her big win back at SummerSlam. So, I think that's what what we're leading towards right now. Uh, we talked about Rhea versus Raquel earlier. Um, I do want to mention Grayson Waller. Yeah, we talked about Grayson Waller, great match with Edge this week on SmackDown. We talked about the tag team titles. Uh <laughs> I did laugh seeing uh, on Raw this week with uh, Maxine Dupree graduating from the Alpha Academy, but then oh, that was great. Valhalla and you know attacked <laughs> attacked her. So it's uh man, Maxine Dupree is really upgraded with the Alpha Academy and just mm -hmm. being part of that tag team. So you know, kudos to her. Um, I guess we'll kind of end on with Raw as far as the Miz Champa match, as far as you know. Champa made his big comeback, attacked Miz, said, hey, you didn't call me when I was out injured and stuff. So they have this great no DQ match, but ultimately Bronson Reed comes out, helps Miz win. So are they like going back to that story? <laughs> I the have idea? no clue. Because when Bronson Reed debuted, he helped Miz on his debut, but then he kind of went off right. on his own. And everyone's like, oh, okay, good, good, good. We don't want to see Bronson and Miz working together. But now on this DQ match here, no DQ match, Bronson Reed helps out Chom or helps out Miz to be Chompa. And I'm like, oh no, are they back working together? Yeah, I had the same I had the same feeling. Uh, I was like, what man. are they doing? I get it. They like to give Miz uh, heavy, like yeah. heavies and backup and stuff. And we hadn't seen it in a while, but it's still like, oh really. I just know fans online is like, dude, Bronson Reed beat Okada last year. <laughs> like, give him yeah. a better push, but I wish that Miz would have lost because because Miz was coming up on like 200 days of the win or whatever, and now that's oh really nothing. Yeah, uh, now that's all gone. Well, they I could have really played up in, on that too. I just hope now Champa can go off now. And I mean, there's been reports, rumors that him and Gargano are going to reform DIY. Mm -hmm. But no, Gargano's been what's the latest? Was he injured? He's cleared. He's cleared like he's cleared good. Now? He's had an aggravated shoulder injury, but he's. All reports are he's been good for the last couple of weeks. Okay, so hopefully, maybe, maybe that's maybe that's what's leading here: Bronson, Miz versus Champa, and uh, getting some backup with Gargano. So maybe that's how yeah. you get DIY back as a tag team go. match here. So 
Boom. Triple H. Champa needs Champa needs some help. Exactly. So why not yeah. call Johnny? So, dude, I'm I'm excited, man, for for where we're going with uh, SummerSlam, um, and like like I said here, we potentially like eleven matches, but you know, yeah. uh, that SmackDown before is probably going to be stacked with some of these matches mm-hmm. as well. So, no, I'm really looking forward to that in the in the coming weeks, and uh, yeah, Raw, the fallout from Money in the Bank, and now the road to SummerSlam. There's so much to look forward to. So, also WWE is cooking right now. So the callback with the Trish and all that stuff, the Trish yeah. match from back in the day. So the finish was, it was Raw, July 10th, 2006, Trish versus Melina. Okay. Johnny Nitro was at ringside getting involved. So Trish does this like move where she bounces off the ropes and slides through the kick Johnny Nitro. And when she comes <laughs> back through the ropes, Melina grabs her, rolls her up and pins her. Similar mm. to Becky tried to kick Trish when she was at ringside getting involved. And that's when Zoe rolled her up and pinned her. Hmm. Okay. So Call back to 2006, like a month or two before Trish's retirement, or well, first retirement. I was gonna say Trish at this point could probably like call back a lot for old matches, and yeah. it's like it could be like a fresh spin on it because mm-hmm. so much time has passed. Maybe not everyone's gonna remember some of that stuff, mm-hmm. and she could kind of recycle some of those old moves exactly and, and finishes there to her favor. So because I didn't stuff. realize that that was a, like a callback to a finish, but then Twitter was like, I remember that. I remember that. Or well, even like, uh, like how? Well, how do you old remember is, that? Yeah, like what's old is new. Like, remember, was it a couple months ago when Seth, you know, slid out of the ring and got under Rhea's arm when Rhea thought it was Dom? She put her arm around him, mm. her head turned, but it was a callback yeah, yeah. to uh, Shawn Michaels and Molina. So, yeah. so that was a cool thing too. So, and, and it's mm. always cool. Like you do those little callback moves or mm. situations, and it's like a little Easter egg for us fans who've been like right. around for a long time and can. Like, oh, yeah, I remember that from back in the day. So it's all good stuff for, for that. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited for where they're going this summer. And the next yeah month is going to be real exciting. And then uh, where they go after SummerSlam is going to be interesting as well. So, uh, yeah, all good stuff. So, well, on that note, let's start wrapping things up. I think we powered through all the major storylines <laughs> and and uh, uh, direction. They're all going for a SummerSlam. So, Tim, uh, on that note, where can the Clixers find you? So you can find most of my work at Pro Wrestling Unlimited, whether that's on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, threads. We're on threads, too, at Pro yes. Wrestling Unlimited. And then you can find me and all my personal stuff over at Timmy Buddy. Some some of it's at Timmy Buddy 89 like Instagram. I couldn't get Timmy Buddy because there's somebody that's got an, that account with one follower or whatever. It's like, what the heck? And then threads, you have to use your Instagram name. Yeah. So it's Timmy Buddy 89 over there as well. But you can find me. Everywhere where you can find Pro Wrestling Unlimited. And I'm Baby Huey. Follow me on Facebook at Baby Huey Official, Twitter and Instagram at Baby Huey83. For everything else, follow in the click at in the click emails in the click at gmail.com. Subscribe is where we get your podcasts at. If you subscribe to us on YouTube, please watch the videos, give us a thumbs up, and uh, leave a comment there as well. And also, yeah, Apple Podcasts, leave us a five star rating, leave a review there as well. All that stuff helps with the algorithm. You know that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, thank you again for tuning in. And on that note, let's go home. And that's the bottom line because Huey said so.